Didier, take it away. Uh, you see, we have a little introduction there for Didier in the chat, and he's a great hero of the longevity movement, and here he goes. Thank you, uh, Walter. So uh, today I will speak about uh, big data for longevity, how to better share. Uh, I will speak especially about the European health data space uh, uh, and uh, the why to health, uh, to, to health, of course. Uh, so I begin with a few classical uh, facts about longevity. Most of you know about this uh, today, like uh, every day about 120,000 people in the world will die of uh, old age. And this is uh, in uh, European countries, uh, about 90% of all uh, deaths. Uh, in the world, about 70% of all deaths. And even in the poorest countries, more than 50%. So even in the poorest countries, like uh, Liz and others were saying today, it is cause number one of death. We know that there are three big categories of diseases due to aging, cardiovascular diseases, things are going better there. Cancers, uh, things are going better also. Uh, for one, uh, uh, for people of the same age, uh, death rates uh, decreases with about 1% each year. And neurodegenerative diseases, sadly, things are not going better there. Uh, but what people think is that uh, um, that the elephant in the, the elephant in the room, well, actually, most causes of death uh, included COVID, uh, included uh, um, infection, all other infectious diseases, other diseases, uh, falls, uh, even road accidents. They are uh, more deadly when people are getting old. So aging is killing us all if we are not dying uh, sooner from other causes. Uh, and something that uh, many people forget sadly is that the uh, many people in the longevity field even, it's that we don't progress, we progress a lot concerning average life expectancy, but we don't progress concerning maximal lifespan. So the oldest person ever was Jean Calment. She died when she was 122 years old. She died already 25, uh, almost 25 years ago. The oldest uh, woman in the world today is only 118. The oldest man on, only 113. And the first person uh, who ever reached uh, 100 years, uh, one of the, the first well-known person who ever uh, reached 100 years is uh, was Terencia. She was the widow of Cicero. And she died uh, when she was 103 and 104, 104, more than 2,000 years ago. What uh, I think and what other people here think, uh, it's uh, very probably possible to find a treatment against aging in 15 to 30 years, but it will be complicated, expensive. And one of the uh, things that we can, can use, we should use, uh, is big data. Okay, there are reasons to be pessimistic also, and uh, we were, we were uh, having a uh, um, discussion about this in uh, the chat, but uh, still, like, uh, like uh, um, Ilya already showed, uh, we had, uh, for the first time since the World War II, a decrease in life expectancy, and it is the first time. It was the first time in 2020, and sadly, it was the second time in 2021. Of course, it was uh, first caused by the COVID, but it was not only the COVID. Sadly, uh, okay. There are also also reasons to be optimistic. For me, the most important reason is that life has never been so precious culturally, especially concerning old people. If there if we had had the same uh, situation 20, 30 years ago, we just have we would just have decided let people die. They are old. They are not in good health, and so on. Okay, facts facts about big data for health. Now we are coming to the real subject of this talk. Uh, big data where is the information first uh, in the scientific literature, of course. So this is the work uh, of Jean to find it and of others. Uh, I will not speak about this uh, further today. In your smartphone, still, of course, and uh, in the data uh, that uh, te tech giants are using, but for the biggest part, uh, in the medical institutions in uh, uh, 
public health uh, administrations, medical doctors, and so on and so on. It has been said that 30% uh, of big data is health big data, so it is an, an enormous amount uh, of uh, data. Uh, for example, you have about 500 uh, healthcare apps, uh, but from these 500 healthcare apps, as far as I know, there is zero, zero public space, uh, public app to share health data for all. So you have some system where, where for some systems where you can share, but nothing really made to be uh, able to uh, really, let's say, help scientists or even help the community. So we have enough health data in the world to know which clinical tests should be started immediately, to know which existing drugs have very probably positive and negative longevity effect. Uh, and but but let's be serious. What we have already at the moment, it's only for small longevity progress, but it's also to prepare uh, real breakthroughs. Now a few words about uh, my region of the world, big data situation in Europe. So like I said already, uh, when Alexander was speaking, you have a beautiful uh, text uh, in, a, in a communication from the Commission to the European Parliament. It's only one year uh, ago. It was written by 2025 citizens uh, should be able to share their health data with healthcare providers and authorities of their choices. Of their choice, sorry. So theoretically, it's beautiful. In 2025, you will be able to share your health data also with authority, and it means also with uh, scientists normally. In Belgium, let's take Belgium. You have uh, great places to uh, consult health data. It's called uh, Science and Order Organization, and you have something each citizen. Has, is supposed to have access to uh, his or her own health data. Great, in theory. And here you have the, uh, the practical side for me, just only a few months ago, now it's going a little bit be better, but it's uh, written in uh, Dutch, uh, 200 meter open door at Ziekenhuis, and I will, the, sorry, and the, the translation is access not open by the hospital. So, most people have theoretical, theoretically access to their data, but practi practically nothing. There is also the beautiful, uh, theoretically beautiful again, health data out. So this is in France. This is a place where normally all uh, health data coming from the social security in France. And um, in France, the social security is a centralized system where uh, many uh, health data are going. So theoretically, uh, it's there to share with, with scientists, but uh, practically, the situation is one, you have to ask uh, three authorizations, uh, two, uh, all these authorizations are taking time, and three, uh, for many, many of the people asking authorizations, they uh, never arrive at, uh, the, at a real result. And at the same time, this is crazy, at the same time, when people are going to a, a pharmacy, uh, in France, in 50% of the cases, the health data that they use for social, social security is going to a private company, an American company called uh, IGVIA, and then sold to, some, to scientists uh, somewhere else in the world and uh, so uh, for money. So the, the health data for scientists in France to access the health data um, through public institutions, it's more complicated than to, than to buy it crazy situation. In Finland, the situation is, is, is supposed to be far better. So they have a system of uh, opting out. And we were briefly speaking about opting out against opting in. So opting out, it means that people who don't want to share, don't share. Opting in, it means that people have to say that they want to share. The problem, if you have an opting in system, you have only a very, very small number of people who uh, are going in the system. When you have a, an opting out system, most people, even uh, except if there are big problems, most people will accept. So they have a system of opting out. Uh, the, there is an access to be paid for scientists, but it's uh, not expensive. The negative aspect is that, uh, as far as I know, there are no, not many uh, studies uh, who used already this data. I don't know why, by the way. And I was uh, inviting a representative of uh, uh, FinData and a representative of the Health Data Hub for, for this uh, conference, but they were not uh, asking positively. Sadly, I will try again. 
Uh, a few words about uh, the legal and uh, de facto uh, situation in most countries of the world con uh, concerning this health data, uh, uh, health data uh, the, uh, way to use uh, way to use. So you have the obligation to share with private companies and public uh, entities when you are a private person. Actually, when when you are going to a, a hospital, you have no choice. And uh, you are not allowed to share most of your data uh, for science. So you are, when you, when you are a group of uh, citizens, you are never allowed to be to be really the owner of your data, and to share it with scientists, practically, and uh, very often also uh, theoretically. Even if you do decide to share, scientists will have problem if they use the, your data, and even if scientists use the, your data, they will have problem to uh, to publish so what should we do to have open solutions first i want to say so this is going in the same direction as uh, stefan uh, uh, sorgner before um, yeah of course health data is sensitive but health data is less sensitive than your political life your sex life uh, much of your private life your uh, um, your life uh, your, your data in banks for example and it will it would be less risky if health data were not to be sold. So uh, I think also, and uh, we had uh, already a beginning of conversation about this. I will also that at least uh, when uh, some work is made by uh, public public uh, money. So it means, for example, with data coming from the state of coming from social security. Uh, no patent should be allowed, and do, this would facilitate sharing of data, publication of negative results, very important, and research outside patent patentable fields. Very important also, this, this is for another discussion, but patents, theoretically, they are there to make sharing of uh, knowledge easier. So you have a patent, you have a monopoly, a monopole, I don't know in English, uh, for um, 20 years, but you are supposed to share your data, your information. But actually, the practi practically, it's not going this way at all. Like we said, for example, uh, in the patent uh, uh, recently uh, acquired uh, concerning uh, blood uh, from uh, the E5 product. Um, so when you, when you read the patent, the E5 product of uh, Alcatraz. When when you read read uh, the the patent, you cannot understand really what's there. So we should constantly constantly remind that most people are willing to share health data for scientific and medical goals in uh, in uh, Belgium, but also in other countries. There were polls about that. When you ask, do you want to share your data with your medical doctor, with scientist? Uh, they say very, very, very largely, yes, 90%. When it is with big pharma, it's still a majority, but slow, but lower. When it is with the insurance company, the majority is against. We should also always remember that GDPR uh, are normally not above fundamental uh, human rights, uh, like the right to health. So we could share with uh, private uh, companies, but be careful. Some private companies, they, they use nice words uh, about open sharing without real sharing. So for me, but that's only my opinion, the best way uh, to share would be the uh, WHO. Sadly, they don't have any, uh, as far as, as, we, as I know, but I'm almost sure, they don't have any project uh, to share uh, health data at the moment. So the best thing at the moment is uh, the uh, European Health Data Space. We were already speaking about uh, this a little bit. And uh, so there is a proposal for regulation, great, from a few months ago with uh, uh, four principles, for, for great principles, interconnectivity of databases, altruist databases, so no use, uh, no possible use for commercial goals, it's related and can be shared with uh, scientists after anonymization or pseudonymization, of course. There are other ways to uh, share data. I will not go in the details because I have uh, no, no time, but I know that there are other ways. One uh, is to use synthetic data. I'm not convinced it's, uh, it's really easy. So not data coming from real people, but uh, created data. 
another solution it's uh, called uh, solid it would be one kind of virtual place uh, that the that the citizens uh, manage uh, can handle and so uh, with the full control for, uh, from the citizen and the last uh, category is all aspects related to federated learning uh, quite complicated to understand but in short where it is possible to um, use data from other sources than your own source without having uh, uh, without seeing this data okay uh, of course of course of course we should use uh, artificial intelligence for many uh, reasons uh, uh, one of the reasons is uh, uh, yeah for help but the other reason is because uh, artificial intelligence has, has dangers but uh, using artificial intelligence for uh, for health has less dangers it's uh, for me uh, negatively fascinating i would say that uh, the best uh, software of the world can correct your mistakes can uh, translate uh, almost everything uh, almost perfectly um, and uh, but that the best software of the best uh, medical software of the world can still not uh, enhance your health and can still not analyze uh, health uh, data uh, better than humans in most cases there are exceptions the the, the most uh, well-known exception is concern, concerning uh, protein folding, but, but still, it's not advancing a lot. I'm already coming to the conclusion. So what we need, uh, reliable shared big, big health data. So once again, we, or I don't know if I said it already today, uh, we uh, have enough health data. We, the problem is not to have more health data. The, this health data is there. The problem is to share it and also to have a system of curation. I had no, I has no time to speak about this. Uh, we need a fast clinical test on humans uh, and also on animals, more research, a sense of urgency, Liz and uh, Oleg can, uh, well, others were speaking about this already. Uh, use of AI, I said it all, all, already. So in a few words, uh, 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 a synthesis uh, some uh, really one page summary of uh, what we propose a system trusted by citizens managed by a public institution or a non profit organization where with an opt out system all health data anonymized or pseudonymized can, can, can be used for scientific research and not for any other use to start clinical tests and to enable everyone wishing it to live a radically longer and healthier life. I know the last uh, what you can do and what we can do is share you well because it's not your most of the time help big data to start trials on animals to start uh, clinical trials on all the uh, well-informed uh, volunteers know or support this thank you for your attention uh, so uh, there are a few organizations who work in this direction don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter the debt of debt it's free for the first two centuries uh yeah <laughs> that's it thank you didier that was a very uh, uplifting speech or presentation um now i liz had her hand up she took it down so i noticed that what, one of those four points was that uh, no possible use for commercial goals that seems ridiculous to me. I can't understand why that would be a a uh, a principle no. that's worth okay. holding. Okay, I will maybe yes because I I know about the I I will come back I will come back a little bit more to this because it's also uh, the remark of uh, Liz. So I'm uh, people are in in Europe, but I think also in the US very afraid that their health data could be used, uh, uh, you know, for example, for insurance and so on. And this is the important point. Of course, after that, uh, the fact that uh, scientists uh, from, uh, from public auto uh, authorities, but also scientists from private companies can use their data for research, yeah, should be, uh, should be clear also. Mm -hmm. But um, to diminish to uh, to have less risk than people don't want to share 
it's important to say that it is absolutely prohibited to have uh, goals, commercial goals related to the data of the people themselves. You may, you, you know, yeah. so uh, yeah. I, I selling directly, selling directly products uh, to these people because they have uh, diabetes or something like that. Yeah. But I, I, I understand the difference, and and it's uh, to be honest, it's it's kind of uh, strategic that I uh, say uh, first only at the public level, because otherwise people are more afraid. Well, one one thing more is it's strange because sometimes people are, are especially afraid of the state, uh, more than from private companies. Uh, like uh, people are less afraid to give their data to Facebook than to. Uh, to the state, and sometimes it's the other way around. So yeah, very I, good. I I agree. I agree. The the, the remark of uh, of uh, Liz was correct for this, and uh, maybe I have to to make a kind of a, a small uh, adding something in uh, mm -hmm. uh, small yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, I had asked a question also about how can we have fast data when people have to die? That's always been a big problem with just like in the database thing and so on, you know, the, uh, but but uh, somebody said, who was it? Oh, yes. Well, somebody somebody had said that that, you know, use use epigenetic age or something to to uh, to do it biological clock. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. 